Hey, everybody. I hope you guys are doing well. Thank you so much for joining us here today. And welcome. And thank you again for taking out this time uh, and stopping in to join this webinar to learn how to get your accuracy and precision in inventory management with ServiceWorks. So let's get started here. I am going to be turning off my camera to use our bandwidth better. Uh, we have our chat room open. I have my co-host Camila here. She will be watching the chat room. So keep your questions coming as we go over our different slides and we cover different topics. Uh, she will also be posting some relevant information uh, from our blog post. So you guys can go over that later. We will also be posting um, this presentation that we're doing today on our site uh, or on a common platform where you guys can access that for later. Um, so please feel free to ask your questions and um, let us know how you feel. If you have any doubts or questions, please pour them in. At the end of my slide, we have our information for our support team, how to get in touch with them. Um, so please be on the lookout for that last slide uh, so that you can get in touch with support. Thank you so much once again for joining. So let me get started here. Okay. So once again, you know, I'm Mugda. I'm thrilled that you guys are here. Whether you use ServiceWorks for your scheduling, uh, your calls, managing your warranties, or use ServiceWorks for ordering from Marcon, we understand the diverse needs of our customers. And today we'll be focusing on how to maximize transparency in managing parts and ServiceWorks, recognizing the vital role of inventory tracking in your daily operations. The transparency ensures that everyone in your company, including your technicians, your managers, your dispatchers, your uh, purchase order department, your customers, they all have an insight into the availability, usage, and handling of parts, uh, fostering trust, efficiency, and accountability in terms of parts management process. In a sense, it means that there are clear and easy accessible mechanisms in place in service works to facilitate the effective management uh, of your parts and how you oversee the related activities uh, about that here. So here are four pillars of management or your part management. What are those four pillars? We're gonna see those four pillars that is precision, in act, inventory tracking, part identification and placement, partnership and procurement and management, pricing and warranty protocol. So our next couple of webinars are gonna be based off of uh, these four principles of inventory management that we're gonna focus on today. Particularly, we're gonna focus on uh, precision in inventory and tracking. That's our goal for this webinar. So let's focus on that one right here. Um, so let's take a deep dive in it. I'm gonna give you a quick introduction about what are the concepts of uh, understanding inventory accuracy with service works. So let's see what we got here. All right. So four concepts, they're the concepts that are based off uh, how do we enhance your inventory accuracy is we gotta focus on your automated stock level updates, real-time inventory visibility, across different locations and barcode scanning for accurate item tracking. What does automated stock level updates really involves is um, that is typically based on certain events like you're ordering a part or you're attaching a part typically um, to any of your job information. Basically it's based off of that. So it automatically, service works automatically updates the quantity of items in stock based on various triggers or events using parts for a job or receiving a new inventory part. The automation actually eliminates the need for manual intervention to adjust inventory levels and helps you ensure that inventory records are always accurate and also they're up to date, you know, like real time information. So for example, when a trigger event occurs, uh, the system will automatically update your stock level. Let's say if a part was sold through ServiceWorks, the system will deduct the quantity and update the stock level. In that case, you know, when you have a new inventory incoming, you're trying to receive an inventory part that you ordered, 
service works will add the quantity of the incoming part to the available stock. The part item disposition also plays a vital role here to accurately maintain the part status in service works. It actually tracks the status of each item with the help of the item disposition. Uh, some of you might have been using the item dispositions. Uh, some of uh, For some of you, it might be new. So we're going to dive into that in a little bit. Um, what is real-time inventory visibility across locations? We're going to see uh, how service works give you real-time visibility of your stock levels and inventory movement across all locations that increases the ability of your business to access the up-to-date information about parts, uh, basically from anywhere across your physical location or your virtual locations. It lets you see the availability of part um, on hand, uh, on order, the ones that are allocated. So we're gonna look at those here shortly. So these are some of the item dispositions that helps you keep a track of uh, your stock levels, you know, deliver, keep on ticket, allocate it. These are some of the important ones when you install a part or you deliver a part, that's like the final status of your part. At that time, the part is going to show up on your invoice. It's going to be deducted on from your inventory and it's not going to be available for further use because it's already used and installed. Keep on ticket, we changed uh, the keep on ticket a little bit uh, a couple of days ago with our new release. Uh, when you keep it on ticket, it doesn't deduct from the inventory, doesn't show on the invoice because you're not ready for it yet, but it is available for you to use it. We have a new item distribution status called as allocated. Uh, when you allocate a part to the job, it doesn't show up on your invoice and it's not deducted on your inventory and it is actually available for you to use it. So on our next slide here, it's going to show you how you can see the item on hand, on order, and allocated. This actually, the screen is when you're trying to do a point of sale. And when you enter an item into your point of sale, uh, it will show you what is the available number of that items. And when you click on that number, it's going to give you the screen and it will show you location-wise on hand, on order, and allocated. So it gives you like the real-time visibility of your parts across your locations at any given point of time. And this is not only limited to your web portal, but it is also, you can also see this availability from your mobile app as well. Uh, the screen below here that you're seeing, it's the listing of your parts on your inventory page in ServiceWorks. You can also see the items on hand. You can uh, see the allocated, you can see the on order everything uh, by location. On the top of this uh, page, which I, I apologize, I, I didn't take the screenshot of that, but this page actually could be filtered by your different locations. If you have a warehouse setup, if you have a location for store setup, and if you have different truck or van locations, it can actually give you uh, the visibility across all your locations. So there's that. Another one that really contributes to your accuracy and precision is barcode scanning. Uh, Service works, you can scan a barcode to receive a part and to transfer parts from one location to the other. It also enables precision. You know, it lets you track the item precisely across locations. Uh, when you receive an item, or if you're trying to put a new item into service works as inventory, that's adding a new inventory item page that you can see. I have highlighted the item number. So if you have a scan gun and you're pointing uh, the mouse cursor to the item number text box, it will read into uh, the item number for you. You will have to type in the item name and the description. Uh, this will help you accurately put in the item number. Sometimes with manual entries, you kind of tend to fat finger stuff in. And if you have like a longer alphanumeric item number, we might tend to insert some manual errors here. So with barcode scanning, we're trying to eliminate that. You can use your mobile app, uh, ServiceWorks' uh, mobile app, ServiceWorks Pro. You can use the camera in order for you to transfer inventory items from one location to the other, or you could just uh, simply use the barcode scanner to add items uh, to your job as well. That's what you can do with ServiceWorks um, app particularly. Uh, now we want to understand what is really real-time tracking. 
So these are some of the hot concepts, some of the hot principles for uh, real-time tracking. What are we going to do? Live updates on part location and status, mobile access for technicians in the field, integration with ordering and procurement for seamless tracking. We're going to park that for later because uh, when I started this presentation, we had the quadrant and one of the quadrant was your integration with ordering and procurement systems. So that would, that would be our uh, next topic that we'll be focusing on the webinar. So uh, let we can keep this topic for later going in a little bit more depth in our next webinar. But let's focus on live updates on part location and status and the mobile uh, access of for technicians. What What is it that they can do uh, from their mobile app? So here we're going to talk about real-time inventory uh, across your locations. If you have not set up your location types and service works, you certainly can do that. It is available to be set up in your inventory settings. You can set up different uh, location types like store, van, truck, warehouse. We already have a the one that says truck, but you can have different uh, location types as well. So when you actually uh, set up a location, you can set up what type of location that is. Uh, the universal search bar that you see up here on the top here, that was earlier helping you search uh, the job numbers. Now that is extended to POS, your customers, uh, and even your inventory, uh, not just inventory, but your configuration settings as well. So you can search for settings here and you can get to that. You can add a location type of your choice, whatever you are currently doing in your company. Please feel free to set up your location types that can help you achieve some precision here. Uh, daily parts required. Now, this is very important from the perspective of your technician. Uh, the top two screenshots are the screen grabs from the mobile app, and the one in the bottom is from the web portal. Yes, we did extend the daily parts required uh, to your web portal as well. If you're logged into the browser and your web portal of service works, you can now see the daily parts required as well, just like how the technician is seeing it. Now, if you look at the first top two screens, it is letting you pick a date, and it will show you the parts that you require for it that particular day let's say if you have a technician who has like uh 10 jobs uh for today then it's going to list all the 10 parts he may require for that day it's going to each one of it will have that button call as pick and when you click on that big button it's going to take them to the next screen where he can transfer that item from the main location from the warehouse location where he's picking up from and then he can do the transfer to his uh truck and then he can further make use of that part in fixing an appliance. You know, maybe he's going to replace a part or he's going to install it, depending on his need for the day. Uh, similar thing is available in the web portal. That's this screen right here that we see. And then we move on to our next topic. Uh, we're going to walk you through tracking a part from order to installation. And this is how your workflow is going to be like. You have a uh, you know, you add a part to a job, then you have, uh, you're going to check if the part is in stock. If it is in stock, you're going to install that, and that part is going to be deducted from your inventory. Now, if you don't have it, you're going to get a just a, you know, like a defined list from your items needed page, whoever is in the office. They're going to put that list together. They're going to create a purchase order, then they're going to receive it, and then it will increase your inventory count and, in real time. So this is a workflow and I can actually provide you a copy of this workflow. This will also be available when the slideshow is available for you to download for later. Uh, we're gonna quickly watch this video, uh, which is going to show you how you're gonna add a part to a job and how you're gonna put together a purchase order. And when the purchase order is placed, what happens to the job status? When the part is received, what happens to the job status and how, uh, the received part is utilized by the technician in the field. Remember, we were talking about the technician, his capability of doing something in the field. So we're going to look at and focus on that. So here is a job. We're going to scroll down. We're going to go to the product section, add an item here. Once we add that item, if we look at that item, 
it's going to show you that you have on hand zero. So technically, now you need to order the Spark. So when we save this to a job, it is going to accumulate all these parts that you need in the items needed section here. And then from here, you're going to put together a purchase order together for your distributor. And once that is done, you're going to make sure that you are ordering it from the right distributor. You are getting it delivered in the right location. And you're going to put the quantity that you need to order and you're going to submit the purchase order. Now, what happens with the workflow uh, when you have submitted this purchase order is we're going to see that uh, when you look at the job information, when you look at this job uh, at any given point of time until you have received this uh, part, the job actually the status of the job automatically changes to be on hold. Now, that status is on hold until the part is received. So that's the next part that we're going to see in our video that as soon as we receive that part, uh, the job comes back. Uh, actually, the job goes into a ready to be rescheduled status. So that's the workflow. Uh, we're going to see we are in receive purchase order screen. Once we go here, we're going to put how many items we're receiving. And on the top left, you also have a section called as barcode. If you point your scan gun uh, to the item number and your cursor is here, it will scan whatever the item number reads. So now we have the item received in our inventory. We're going to locate that item and we are going to see that hand is two. So we received two of that. And then the job automatically moved to the ready to be rescheduled uh, screen pretty much. So what is our next slide? We're going to see that. Now this is going to walk you through your part or item installation, basically from the mobile app. This is the exact screen that we looked at a couple of screens before. This is a screen where uh, the technician can find the parts required for that day. And this is the part that has been received. He's going to transfer or they're going to transfer it from their main location to the truck location or any other location that they're going to take that part from. And once that transfer is complete, he can then go and access the job to actually change the disposition of the job. Uh, the, sorry, the disposition of the part. So if you look at the product and the equipment side of it, you can see this part that is available number two. It's going to show what location it is available at. And we also have the disposition drop down uh, that he's going to fill into and say that he delivered. So for him, it's available for one because he took it to his truck. So if you look at the disposition, he's going to change it to deliver. That is going to deduct that part from the inventory. Once uh, that is done, it's also going to be available for your invoicing purpose. So that's that, that in place. So like I said, partnership and procurement management uh, is something that we're going to focus on on the later part um, of our presentation. Uh, it's an upcoming topic for your webinar. We're going to talk about how you can seamlessly integrate with Marcone, and that will not only enable you to check available parts and make purchase, but also facilitates uh, smooth tracking of inventory from ordering to getting that delivered to your warehouses. This not only reduces mistakes, but it also ensures prompt restocking. It also enhances your inventory management efficiency and ultimately leads to cost saving. And these are some of the things that we have to, uh, these are some of the things that we get out of uh, the procurement management and partnering with a distributor. Uh, that's what we're gonna get out of it. Also, some of you might have noticed uh, if you guys use ServiceWorks on Marcone's connectivity, uh, we, our latest release has the feature uh, Add to Cart. So on the items needed page, we also have a button that says Add to Cart. So let's say if you have like 10 items that you put together uh, and select those, you can just click on that button which says Add to Cart and then 
you can uh, have those 10 items added to your barcode cart and you can decide in barcode cart in the barcode site how to get those shipped out or decide on their shipping. And you can complete and fulfill that order from barcode if uh, you would like to do that. Uh, next up is we've seen how we can get to our precision and accuracy in your inventory management. Now we're going to see how the accuracy and precision is going to help us enhance uh, our operational efficiency and how ServiceWorks reduces downtime and improves your turnaround time, basically. So it's it's all correlated, right? Why are we doing all this? We're doing all this because our customers are satisfied. Our customers are happy. Real-time tracking and accurate inventory are aids into streamlining your order fulfillment process, reduces the need for any kind of manual inventory checks, optimizes warehouse space utilization, enables timely decision-making, ultimately enhances your overall productivity. Uh, and again, you know, in terms of customer satisfaction, you are up in your game. ServiceWorks definitely enhances your servicing ability, your efficiency by optimizing your service management process. Um, it facilitates ineffective scheduling. We saw how the job went on hold immediately when we actually placed the order for that part. And when the part was received, how it went into a ready to be rescheduling uh, status that will enable you to get an instant insight. Oh, the part has come in. How do I manage this uh, job that is ready to be rescheduled? Let me go check my technician's availability. Then you're going to look at which are the technicians that are available. You might want to send in the same technician who actually did this job and found out and diagnosed the problem and requested the part. That will ensure that, you know, some kind of trust with your customer that you're sending back the same technician who actually diagnose the problem and they have you know established a connection with them. So this results into swift responses and it reduces your downtime, improves your delivery time and elevates your uh, you know customer satisfaction how you provide the customer satisfaction. Uh, here are some advanced tips that I would like to uh, provide from my side. I talk to a lot of you every day in and out, and I try to understand how you guys do business. It's very exciting. Every business is different. There's a lot of learning involved. And each time I meet with you guys, I learn something new. So this is out of my learning. Uh, from what I have understood, that these are some of the tips that you guys can use to make sure you have attained precision and accuracy while you are managing your inventory. I know we're talking about a lot of automated updates automated updates to your stock levels, but I would recommend that we do regular audits that would involve counting the inventory items physically to compare, you know, what is the recorded stock level in the system and what you physically have. So that will help you catch any inconsistency and discrepancy that you come across and quickly correct that error. So you are, you know, your physical inventory and the, your inventory in the system is same. Uh, Reducing manual effort that involves, you know, you know, utilize the barcode technology while you're stocking the items. Make sure you are barcode scanning them. You're not fat fingering any of the item numbers. You make sure that you get the item numbers right. You get the name right. You get the discrepancy right. So you are reducing the chances of any kind of errors that happen while you input the inventory information. You can use uh, forecasting techniques. And those forecasting techniques could be alongside of your historical data that will help you predict your inventory needs. You know, there are some reports in ServiceWorks that lets you do that. In the end of my presentation, there's a list of reports that will actually let you see your history, see your usage pattern of the parts, and then it will help you forecast what are the parts that I really need. Like there's a part X that I use like at least 10 times a week. So you know that you, and you should never be out of stock for that part. So that will prevent your stock outs and overstocking situation. So definitely please take a look at that report. Our blog post also has a report directory, which talks about each report in detail. Very, very helpful. And if uh, Camila can post uh, that link, that would be wonderful and awesome in the chat so you guys can actually see what each report is capable of. Uh, another thing that I would like to emphasize here is standardize your process. 
to make sure that you're, you know, you're consistent in receiving story and issuing the items. Make sure your staff is trained. Train your staff to, you know, show them the importance of accuracy and adherence to make sure they're following your established procedure for, you know, receiving the part, ordering the part, receiving it, and, you know, transferring it to the truck and then getting it to the customer, getting it the right part to the right customer. Uh, one thing that I forgot to mention, which just came to my mind right now when I was talking about the inventory types is you can, when you can define different inventory locations based off of that, ServiceWorks also lets you uh, create your bin locations. Let's say if your warehouse is organized by different bin locations, then make sure you are organized by bins. A lot of my customers that I've seen is, uh, and I can add this to the tip here, that they organize the parts that they have received by the customer's uh, first letter of their last name or their first name. And then they go, they follow that alphabetical convention to make sure that the parts are stored correctly. If you actually utilize uh, the bin uh, format in your inventory stocking, then this would be very helpful. Make sure that you foster communication between all your teams, your purchasing department, your uh, service department, your technician, your operations, everything, everybody needs to be on the same page as far as uh, your inventory management is concerned so that we make sure that we are aligning towards achieving accuracy and precision, you know. Uh, now that I shared my side of the advanced tips here, I would love to hear from you guys what are some of your advanced tips that you've been using I would love to hear that from you. That would be a great, great learning for me today. That would be my takeaway from this webinar. And it would be a good uh, thing that we share some of our best uh, advanced tips with our ServiceWorks friends as well. So I'm going to give it a minute uh, for you guys to just chime in your uh, tips that you think that will help our each other to get to the accuracy and precision that we're trying to look for. So let's take a minute. Um, your time starts now. Try to chime in and put in your uh, tips. All right, so let's focus on some of the best uh, practices of uh, what we can, some of the best practices for le leveraging real-time tracking. Uh, so we are using ServiceWorks to its full potential. So let's look at those really quick here. All right. Automating your processes, basically. So automate inventory processes wherever possible. Like I mentioned, try let's try to minimize the manual error to streamline our operations. Make sure we are integrating with the new technology of barcode scanning to make sure we automatically capture the data. Uh, we can also set up the threshold alert. You might have seen this these two words, which is ROP and EOQ when you're trying to adjust the quantity of any of the inventory items, you might be wondering what these are. Uh, oops. So these are, see, that's what I was talking about, bad fingering. I just ended up touching my screen when I was not supposed to. All right, let me get back. Okay, so talking about ROP and EOQ in terms of points, ROP is your reorder point and EOQ is your economic order quantity. So when you set those, what is the importance of setting those up? Why would we set those up in service works? Because let's say if you have an item X, it's a fast moving item in your inventory. You never want to be actually running out of that. So we want to make sure that we order that whenever it's low. So let's say if you reach like quantity of three for part X, 
you would want to place a purchase order for that. Since it's a fast moving item, you always want to maintain some number of, some quantity of that item in your inventory constantly. So let's say if you want to order 15, so EOQ is your economic order quantity. So when you reach the quantity of two for part X, you will always order 15 of part X. That's what the ROP and EOQ means in service works. Uh, later part, when we're going to talk about the procurement management, we're going to talk about how we will be placing purchase orders and different other things around that. But I want you to remember is ServiceWorks has the ability to uh, send new alerts to, you know, when your ROP has reached, ServiceWorks sends you an alert uh, saying that, hey, you are running low on this item. Would you like to actually place a purchase order for this? And it will automatically fill up the purchase order. You just have to click a button and send that purchase order to refill or replenish this particular item that we're talking about. Uh, again, procurement system comes into picture for better automation, for better part lookup. So your purchasing team can look up the parts that are available with your procurement partner. Uh, and then you can make use of that, train your staff, make sure they know how to utilize the real-time tracking of service works, take advantage of that. Uh, utilize analytics. Like I mentioned before, talking about reports, leverage the reports and service works to analyze the real-time inventory data. Identify your trends, forecast uh, your demands, and optimize stocking levels. Uh, this will help you, again, overstocking and understocking, you know, of your parts that will help you do that. So these are some of the best practice tips. Again, let's take a minute to share with our ServiceWorks friends and me to see what your best practices are. I think the chat room is open. Please feel free to chime in some of the best practices that you guys do in your everyday so we all can learn from it. Um, Bugda, the chat room is actually closed for uh -huh. all the attendees. Um, so I'm just having them for now. Um, okay. And their answers as a answer a question. Okay. So, yeah. is it open now for the for everybody? The question and answer, uh, you know, Marion was typing. They can they can type in there if she is listening to what I'm saying. And is the chat available now, Camila? No, it's still disabled. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna have everybody type it in as a Q and A for now. Uh, yes, so I yes. That. So the question and answers, I can see the questions coming in. Can you can you look at the Q and A? Do you see that room, Camila? Yeah, so one of the questions is, how do you add a tracking to a PO number if yeah, so you're not using Mark Home? You have the uh, text box there, so you can start typing your answers there uh, while I continue with this. I think the questions are coming in now. We'll, we will, at the end of our session, we will also go over these questions again. Sorry, guys, sorry for the interruption. Uh, and I hope you guys are able to type in your questions now. So we're going to also look at some of the common pitfalls and some troubleshooting techniques that we can actually use quickly. Some of the common pitfalls, like I mentioned, are stocking and stock outs. Uh, basically, sometimes result into inaccurate forecasting 
Also, that is resulting into your imbalances for inventory. So errors in data entry reliance on outdated system, outdated technological system can lead to discrepancies as well uh, between recorded inventory levels and your actual stock on hand. Here is exactly where ServiceWorks fits in to help you with the real-time tracking of your parts to give you live updates on part location and status. Uh, reluctance to accept new technology can hinder efficiency and prevent your team from adapting to your market demands. So for troubleshooting some of your common inventory issues, check for data accuracy at all the times. Review your system settings and integration settings uh, to make sure that your software settings are correct. Check your system settings and configure uh, configurations to ensure that they align with your requirements, mainly your operational workflow that we looked at uh, from the part ordering to receiving and installing. So make sure your workflows are correctly uh, set up in the system. Make sure uh, sometimes what happens is when the technician is in the field, uh, you have to monitor the connectivity. Sometimes the internet could be unstable. Make sure that the internet is stable. Uh, ServiceWorks app actually works in the offline mode, meaning you can actually download the data at the beginning of your day, download all the jobs, work like you're working regularly in the app. And when you have the right data connection to sync back up to the cloud, uh, the data is synced back up. So make sure you monitor your connectivity, you review your software settings, you review your Integration settings, if you're integrated with the procurement management system, address any user errors. If there is any manual errors that has occurred, some of the common ones, like, you know, the item number is wrong, something is wrong, make sure that you're trying to correct those promptly. Uh, make sure uh, you always have the latest uh, version of the mobile app. ServiceWorks does give you a prompt whenever a new mobile app version is released. Make sure your mobile app is uh, the latest one that you have to work on from the field. This is a list of reports that we have here. Uh, some of them is like the stock valuation report, uh, inventory created, that actually gives you a list of inventory created by a particular date. Parts usage by part number, it's a very important report. It will show you the usage of a particular part by the part number inventory by reorder level. So whatever your reorder levels are set at, it will show you what is the inventory requirement that you have. Serial number search and serial number available are, those are the widely used reports that I've known of. Any other reports that you guys are using, uh, make sure you can chime in and let us know what are some of the uh, uh, reports that you are using. So this is our list of reports and these are uh, some of the takeaways from my side, the importance of inventory accuracy and real-time tracking, how you're going to uh, leverage service works to achieve precision, how you're going to make use of your automatic uh, automated stock updates that you get in service works, real-time visibility of your part location and status, using barcode scanning to eliminate errors from manual entry. Uh, Please feel free to share uh, your takeaways if you uh, would like to share. And I'm, I once again apologize for the chat room not being available, but please keep your comments and everything coming uh, into your Q&A section so we can learn uh, from that as well. Stay tuned for our next webinar. Uh, that is going to be about partnership and procurement management. We will be announcing the dates soon. Uh, you will see a pop-up in your ServiceWorks account, just like how you've seen this one. Make sure you register and you get that invite and have that invite saved somewhere so you can log in on a date. Make sure that you add this webinar to your calendar, uh, whatever calendar you use, your Outlook or Google, so it can pop up on your timeline so you don't miss on it. These are some of the tips that I'd like to give you guys. Here is uh, our support contact. If you have questions, if you would like to call and talk to us, that's our phone number, 636-220-4363. We have our email, support at service.works. So please feel free to shoot us an email of what you have. 
uh, if the questions that you have. And we also have the link of our blog post that will actually have a lot of information on our features, on our regular updates, and you will also find uh, the, the report directory that I was talking about. You will find that on the blog uh, post as well. So let me take a look at our room. Yeah, so I see uh, where it says if I order something and set up a PO, I don't have a tracking number right away. So I do see a way to add it after you make the PO. You, it really depends, Jeremy, if you're connected to Marco, you're going to get the tracking number right away. If you don't, then you can put that in later in a reference. So that is something that you can do. Uh, how do we implement barcode scanning uh, into your into inventory? Like I mentioned, you know, Marianne, you can uh, use a barcode scanner, get a barcode scanner, connect it to your system, and then uh, whenever you scan an item number and your uh, cursor is pointing to that particular item number, it should pick up the item number uh, from that. So. We can do that. I think there is a blog post, Marion, available, uh, which talks about how you can do the barcode scanning. So I think, uh, Camila, if you can post that, that would be wonderful in the answer for Marion. How can we correct inventory errors between a physical inventory and what the some new claims we have? Um, Marion, I would definitely recommend to do like periodic audits to see what your physical inventory is holding and what service works is showing. That way you're gonna quickly catch your discrepancies and any inconsistencies that you're seeing in your physical location and uh, your whatever a service works is showing you there. Uh, yes, Marion, the barcode uh, scanning is available for part numbers. Were you trying to look at doing something else with that? So let us know if there's something that you were trying to scan something else. Invoice numbers for the distributors, okay. That is something that I can bring up to uh, my team to see if we are gonna look at that in the future. Uh, currently, we don't scan invoice numbers for the distributors at this point of time, but that's a good suggestion. We love taking suggestions from our customers. And uh, if you have signed up for our help desk uh, in ServiceWorks on the top right corner, there's a question, little question mark that you can see if you click on that you can actually go to our help desk, sign in to our help desk. And uh, the last option on that help desk is gonna be like uh, feature enhancement or suggestions uh, improvement. Uh, so you can actually click on that and you can uh, say, hey, you know, invoice numbers from distributors, something that I scan, I would be interested in seeing that feature down the line in service work. So you can definitely, uh, have that suggestion put in, have it taken in for an issue that service works together. I'm not taking the inventory out so I can trust your inventory. All right. Uh, we will look into that, Jeremy. I'm going to go find that ticket and see what that ticket is about and take up with our support team. Like I said, again, you know, if you have submitted a ticket, uh, make sure that you are looking at our help desk to see the progress on the support ticket. And I think Camila is keeping up with all the question answers. She is answering each one of those questions with blogs or uh, the right answers.
Do we have more questions open? Uh, John Mitchell, I will go ahead and enable that daily parts required for you. So just be on the lookout for that. Yeah, and I think, uh, Camila, you want to tell uh, John where that would be so they know where to locate it? Uh, yeah, so it'll be under your jobs tab from your yeah. taskbar in your homepage. Perfect. John is ahead of everything. John is actually giving us his company ID. Thank you, John. That is great. Okay. Cool. Do you guys have more questions to go over? Um, because the chat was not available, I wanted to, you know, I know we took like a couple of minutes to share best practices and uh, um, some of our tips, but we can definitely use this platform to just put in your comments here for best practices. Like I said, I would love to learn from you guys uh, how you guys do certain things to maintain accuracy and precision. Uh, please feel free to share those as well. It would be a good learning for me, Camila, and our other ServiceWorks friends here. That would be wonderful if you guys have to share some of your tips and uh, some of your best practices. And again, just want to reiterate uh, our topic for the next webinar that is going to be partnership and procurement. Watch out your uh, for your ServiceWorks account to get uh, the pop up for signing up for that webinar, and we will chat with you guys uh, sometime, hopefully next month. And if you guys have questions, please feel free to reach out to support at service.works, or you could give us a call at. 636-2204363. I just want to make sure all our questions are answered here. Just want to go down the list. I just want to give Camila to answer our questions here. I know she's been working on those questions and typing in answers as fast as she can. Let me just go over the questions here in the chat room and barcode. Yes, this is recorded, so you will get a copy of this later. It will be hosted, so you can uh, look at this webinar later as well. Okay, uh, I see Jeremy's questions popping up here. Let's see a way to add it. It would be great if you can make a PO and say order from our code. I always do. It would be great if we. I would not have a mark. The vendor is paid and so this works if there is a box to say it was already paid. So I don't have to 
do the double work. Uh, Jeremy, can you elaborate on your question uh, or your particular screen that you're talking about here? Camila, did you get Jeremy's question? Are you answering that? Yep, I'm answering that. Okay, okay got it. I think the the reason the questions he's asking is how to add the PO number custom one. Um so you'll have to do that oh, okay. while yeah, you're yeah. creating your purchase order. Creating the purchase order, yeah. So I, I think uh I did point out to that uh when I was uh, running the video. It's right about Jeremy, it's right above uh no distributor payments, okay. Is paid in service. Okay, so you are saying uh, that when you place an order uh, for parts through ServiceWorks to Marcon, you always you have to come back to ServiceWorks and mark your distributor payments as paid. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, you have to right now go ahead and do that, but that's that's a good uh, idea for future enhancement to look at whatever orders are paid and that information reconciles with uh, service works. That is that is a good suggestion. So we got two suggestions today: scanning your distributor invoice numbers and uh, your uh, distributor payments to be reconciled from what you see in Marcon. Let me make a note of those so I can take that to my product team. If you use the keep on ticket disposition and later change it to another word, does it decrement your inventory twice? No, it will just increment it will just decrease your inventory once. So the keep on ticket uh, it doesn't deduct your inventory. It just reserves for you. It doesn't even put it that on the invoice. Uh, the screenshot that I, I I'll go back to that screenshot it will hopefully show you what the keep on ticket does. I hope this helps. Perfect. We have a couple of more minutes before we end today's session. I would really like to thank you guys for being here. It means a lot to us and uh, we get to understand our users as well. Uh, please let us know if you guys have any questions, concerns, uh, anything that you want to go over. Please feel free to reach out to our support team. Uh, the 
support email is support at service.works. The call phone number is 636-220-4363. If you are in service works, there's always a chat available for you. So please chime in, make sure you give them your company ID. Company ID is something that you can locate in your site settings. So please feel free to use that chat and ask questions that you have. Uh, our support team is very knowledgeable and they're always excited to help you guys. There is a help option on the top right corner. Make sure that you have your help desk ID created. You can log into your help desk, submit your request. May that be for reports. May that be for any of your uh, questions about billing, licensing, if you have any reports that you want to make, any new suggestions that you would like to make, please feel free to use that option. And uh, hopefully this was a helpful session for you guys. Thank you once again. And you guys have a good day and have a good weekend. Camila, is all our questions answered? Are we good here? Uh, yes, Um, for now. We are good. I think most of these are just suggestions and improvements okay. that I have recorded. So um, we will bring this up to my, our team and have everything looked into for you all. Okay. All righty. Thank you so much, Marion. We will make a note of that. We'll try to do more webinars so we can spread more knowledge about service works and everybody can learn from these sessions. Thank you so much for your time once again. And See you guys later. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.